Hi girls, today we are talking about the Proverbs 31 girl, the working girl, because whatever we find our hand to, no matter what walk of life, we're doing it for God. Show. We've been talking about the Proverbs 31 woman, and so today we have so much in store for you. So if you missed some of the episodes before, you can go back. We talked about the virtuous woman and the women that God can trust and that her husband trusts, and so these are good topics for us to learn in today's world. So the world that we're living in, we've talked about this. This is a very interesting world. When you read Proverbs 31, it can be a very scary book for women to read, especially nowadays in this time and in this era that we're living in. You hear about the things like she is a good wife and she does this and she does these things and the world is saying, what? No, she's on her own. She's her own person. Well, guess what? I'm here to tell you what the world says is wrong and what the word says is right. So we as godly women, we have to get into what the word of God says. So in Proverbs 31, he clearly states this for us. I love Proverbs 31 because it's the book of wisdom, Proverbs is. And at the very end of it, God thought it was important enough to end it with the girls in the house. I love that. Woo woo. He's important to us and we are important to him. And so therefore God ends his biggest book, I think, with the women. And so God wants us to be who he needs us to be. Now we can do this right or we can do this wrong. So let's do this God's way. And so in Proverbs 31, we are going to pick up in Proverbs 31, 13 through 15. Today we are talking about the working woman. I like this because I myself am a working woman. I was a stay-at-home mom for about five years. It was one of the most beautiful parts of my life. And then God asked me to go back to work and get back into ministry and working. So I work part-time in a job and I work full-time as mom and wife and everything else. And so I'm telling you, you can do this. Your job is wherever you go and whatever you put your hands to it can be done with excellence so girls let's go there proverbs 31 13 through 15 she finds wool and flax and busily spends it verse 14 she is like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar she gets up before dawn and prepares breakfast for her household and plans the day of work for her servant girls Woo! hold on one second first of all you're trying to tell me pastor jess you want me to get up before everyone else Yes, maybe you are that girl, but I know a lot of girls that aren't that woman. So remember what Proverbs 31 woman is. It is not a prerequisite, right? It is not a shopping list for men. No, the Proverbs 31 woman, we're getting into these verses where you could feel bad about yourself and you could go, I don't feel like I connect with this woman. I don't take care of my household like that. I'm a working woman. I'm out. My husband helps me. The family helps me. We run our home in a different way. That is okay. But what I am telling you is, is you actually do run your household, whether you realize it, in the way that you need to. You make sure that the people in your home have everything they need. And I know you do because you're a girl, because you're a woman, and it's in us. There is things that God builds within us that we know that are just something that is called woman's intuition. I believe it's the Holy Spirit. I believe it's the Holy Spirit that intunes us into what it is that our family has need of. You know, we're the first one to know that we're pregnant, right? The husband doesn't know, nobody knows, but we're the first one to know the sign of life inside of us. Isn't that a beautiful thing? I believe that when my children were little, I remember when the kids would um, were babies and, you know, they cry, but I would be up and almost halfway to their room before they even started crying. And my husband would say to me every time, how do you do that? I have to let you know. I don't know, but I do know that I had the Holy Spirit helping me parent. And so he's your co-leader in life. That means wherever you find yourself, you find work. Whether that's a stay-home mom, whether that's on the job eight hours a day, whether it's like me and you do the part-time job and you're always a mom and a wife and everything else. Listen, we carry many hats. And I'm here to tell you that the woman that carries all those hats, she is wonderful and she's anointed to do it. So you've got this, girlfriend. You may be tired. You may be weary at times but you press into God like we talked about the virtuous woman. You trust God with all that you 
you have, and you can do this. She is amazing. This Proverbs 31, I love where it says that she's a merchant ship and she brings food from afar. That's kind of like methodical, right? But think about a merchant ship brings so much to a need of an area. That means that you are the one that goes and finds what everyone needs for the people that you're over and you bring what it is that they need and you take care of them. That's pretty awesome, right? That means that I'm the one that usually goes shopping. Now, whether that's Instacart or whether that's actually me getting in my car and going to the grocery store, I'm the one that usually does that. My husband is wonderful and he will do it for me at times. There are other ways that we do this. We do this in our workplace, right? So I'm a boss as well. I have hundreds of people under me that I am in charge of and that that I bear the weight of and that I love and I wanna make sure that them and their families are blessed and taken care of. That means every decision that I make is important to God. That means that I've got to commit my life and everything that I go and consider and do for our business and for our job, guess what? That's gonna affect down the road and every person in the way right? So then here I am a mom and every decision that I make for our home and how it runs and, and how, what, are, what are we as a family? Who do we represent? Who are we going to be? This is all a reflection of Jesus Christ. When the mom was teaching her son what to look for in a wife, it was beautiful because here she was saying, you want someone that's going to put her hand to something, that's going to make something happen. She's going to be busy about her work and she's going to do it. Now listen, this is going to be hard because sometimes you're going to get tired. Sometimes the tasks are going to be daunting. Sometimes you're going to feel overwhelmed and like you're drained. I've been there. I can hear you right now. Pastor Jess, I'm too busy between my job and my kids and my husband. I don't ever get me time. I give all of my time for everybody else. But listen, I'm going to challenge you. You're not going to like me for a moment, but trust me in this. That's your fault. Because as much as I want to complain that everybody takes my time, it's my job to schedule in some time for some self-reflection, for some time with the Holy Spirit, for some time to pour into all the things that he's asked me to do in the workplace and at home. You see, I know that the Holy Spirit wants to fill you today. He wants to equip you today to be all that he's asking you to do. He didn't give you all of this on your plate as a family or in your job or in your workplace. And maybe you're going, I'm single, but I, I still am busy. Well, guess what? You're busy with being a student. You're busy with friends. You're busy. Every person that's in your world, you are now working at doing something for it because when you love somebody, you want to give a piece of yourself. And so the beautiful thing about that is, is the more you pour out, the more you're going to have to take a moment and you're going to have to pour back in. So what does that look like for you? Number one, I need you to make sure that you're getting filled up with the word of God. I keep saying this every time because it's so important. Number two, you got to get into a good Bible-based church. If you're part of the Rock Church and Merle Outreach Center, awesome. But if you need to find a local church in your area, area because that will fill you up. You need to find godly friends. Maybe go out for a coffee with somebody who wants to talk about Jesus and who you're going to be encouraged by because you're going to go into the workforce. You're going to go back home to those kids and that husband and you need to be like refreshed. Sometimes the kids drain you. They pull from you. They need you. You want an adult conversation. Sometimes the husband, you're helping him. You're walking him through stuff. You're supporting him, but you need to be with a girlfriend who you can just laugh with and be cheesy with and have fun with because that's what God created us to do is have have a lot of words and sometimes that bothers the guys and that's okay girls we get each other so have your moments of me time in the middle of the busyness but when you're on do it well do it with excellence do it with integrity do it with all the things we talked about in the virtuous woman because God has equipped you to do this so when you feel tired take some time to yourself so now that we've understand that we need some time to ourselves I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about being the working mom, going out and doing the things for your family and everything else. This means that it, this is very important and wherever you find yourself, you will find work. That's just how, that's how it is. You can't get out of it, so you might as well embrace it and do it well. You can have an attitude of poor me and I'm just, oh, the, you know, you should love me because of, don't be that girl. Those are hard women to be around. And God says, that he has equipped you to do everything he's put in your hand to do, right? And so you can do this with a beautiful attitude. So when you're serving your family, you have to make that meal. Now listen, you're making a thousand meals a day, especially during COVID. I don't know about you guys, but it was like three meals a day, every day for everybody. I finally just said, you're on your own and I don't care if you eat cereal. You can definitely have those moments, but don't make that a habit. 
Do it with joy. Serve your family with love. When you go to work, don't be frustrated you have to go to work. Ask God to help you change your attitude and, and find that your workplace is a beautiful thing. You know, when you're a boss, you're over your family. When you are um, on the job and maybe you're a leader in your job or maybe you're a leader in your small group or maybe you're a leader in, your, in the children's ministry or maybe you are um, somebody who just people are drawn to. You know, that, that's a gift that God gives you. You are entrusted with these things and you are entrusted with people. Well, guess what happens? You can have a big-headed personality about that. And so guard yourself because you want to be somebody that goes out, considers a field, that does this well, that brings in things for people, that blesses people, that puts her hand to something, and it prospers. You don't want to be this girl that nobody wants to be around. So remember to keep a beautiful attitude about the work that you have in your hand. When you shop for something, you need to ask God to pray. And ask for favor. You say, how do I do this? When I go shopping, Pastor Jess, I need good deals on stuff. I need to find everything my family needs. I'm looking for the best school for my teenager. I'm looking for the right books for my children to learn from. I'm looking for the right church. I'm looking for the right pastor. I'm looking for all these things. But just stop for a second. It is not just your responsibility to do this alone. That when you go out into the workplace, when you go and you can and you are getting things and gathering for your homes and the family members that you have, and when you're you're setting the table for a party or or you're leading a group in your church or whatever it is that you find your hand to do that work, you need to do this with Jesus. You cannot do this on your own. You will fail at it. When we do things in our own ability, it will actually not prosper and produce a blessing because we only go so far. But when we invite the Holy Spirit and God to be a part of everything we do, guess what happens? We reap the blessing from it. There is favor on it. God's goodness pours out from it. And his love endures and encompasses the family and the employees and the small groups and the church members and your friends and your boyfriends and your girlfriends, all the people that you do life with will be blessed because of it. Isn't that good news? So what am I talking about? Well, I'll give you little cheesy examples. When I go to the store, I ask God when I'm looking for something specific, I need a deal, God. And so I will ask the Holy Spirit to lead me to the right deal. And you have to be okay with closed doors in those moments. You have to be okay on the job when you, maybe you're, you're running a whole bunch of papers and you're organizing agendas and schedules for people and, and you have to be really on it. Maybe you need to take a moment and invite the Holy Spirit in on your plan. You say, but I don't work for the church. I'm not talking about that. You take Jesus wherever you go. A working woman is a godly woman. A godly woman is a working woman, and God is with you everywhere you go. You don't work just for man. You work for God. You represent the kingdom in all that you do. And so when you do this, you bring Jesus into it. So you bring him into your decision making. Here at the church, I don't make a move until I've prayed because I don't want to mess something up because in my own ability, I can easily do that. When I'm talking to my children and I notice something's off with them, guess what I do? I go and get alone and I ask the Holy Spirit, what's going on with this kid? Show me what I need to do. And I will just hear and listen and I will wait, I will read my word and I will get direction on how to have a conversation with them. I will get direction on how to maybe be in their world at that moment. You see, when I go to the store, I ask for deals and good deals and God always makes a way. I find the best deals and I get to come home and tell Dan, guess what? We got a good deal on this because we are one. And so he went shopping with me because we are one. So you can find good deals. You can run a business well. You can lead a home well. You can make meals well. The things you don't like, you bring Jesus in it and he's going to make joy for it in you. You see, the best business person always knows that it is about God. The best mom always knows that she doesn't parent alone, but she co-parents with Jesus Christ. And so these children are his and his first. Your husband is his and his first, girls. And your jobs and wherever you work, your student, maybe you're working and you're studying, guess what? You do that unto God. Because in Proverbs 31, that girl can handle it. That girl's got this. That girl puts her hand to something and she prospers. I love Proverbs 22, 29. It says, do you see any truly competent workers? They will serve the king rather than working for ordinary people. You are not just working 
for ordinary people. You are working for Jesus and everything you put your hand to is anointed by God. So don't underestimate your day, your walk, your parenting, your jobs, your student, your leading people in ministry, wherever you find yourself, you are a full-time minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you've got this. So apply that in your life today. Put that into practice. Begin to do your day with Jesus. Begin to do it because of Jesus and take him into the workplace with you. Take him into your every day with you and stop doing life alone because you aren't alone. He loves you and he's equipped you and he's gonna fill you to be prosperous in everything you put your hand to. If you wanna know Jesus today, this is your opportunity. You know, so many times we walk away from maybe like a little teaching like this or, or you say, I wanna know who God is but you don't know him intimately and personally. Well, guess what? Jesus wants to know you. He loves you very, very much. And he says that there is no way to know him except by asking him to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. That means, how do I do that? All you gotta do is pray a simple prayer and believe that he is your king and he is Lord and he is the one true God and God alone. And so today, I'm gonna pray a prayer. If you need to pray this prayer for yourself, let's do it together. You can repeat after me. I will pause so that you can repeat it. And then when you're done, I will give you instructions. So go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes and say, Jesus, thank you for today. Lord, I ask that you would come into my heart and be the Lord and savior of my life. Thank you, Lord, that you are good. And so God, I ask that you would forgive me of my sins, that you would wash them away, that you would make me clean and pure today. Today, I turn away from hell and I run towards heaven. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come and teach me, that you would fill me that you would use me and that you would guide me. Today is the day that I am a new creation in Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed that prayer, we would love to connect with you. So go to www.rockchurch.com and click the Get to Know God button. And when you do, we'll send you some information and we are excited to connect with you. Well, I love you girls and we will see you next time. Thank you.